and um, get started. So I have a small little presentation I'm gonna share with you guys, and then I'm gonna um, give it over to Anne Marie. So welcome to our family fun this Saturday. I'm so glad you guys could join us. So what we're gonna be doing today is practicing your looking eyes with DIY binoculars. <clears throat> So in case you guys didn't know, um, Trees Atlanta's mission is to protect and improve Atlanta's urban forest by planting, conservation, and education. So our speaker today that you can see next to me on the screen is Anne-Marie Hoffman. She is the founder of Tyke Hike and also the head hiker. She, we've been working with Tyke Hike for a few years now. Um, since the pandemic, we've done a few virtual things. So we're excited to share, continue to share with you guys, even if it is virtually. So um, if you guys have any questions, we have the Q&A button, but Anne-Marie and I were kind of discussing, and I think what we're gonna do, she has a book that she's gonna read, and then we also have the craft. And so I have the ability to open it up for you guys to actually um, turn your, computers and your mics on so that we can all see each other while this craft is going on. So I think what's going to happen is she's going to read the book. And then when we transition into the craft, I'm going to give you guys that ability to um, turn your microphones and your cameras on. You don't have to. It's completely optional, but I'm going to give you the ability to choose because I'm the host. So I will do that if you guys want to um, get on. I know Anne Marie says it's a little easier when she can see the, the kids doing the activity. So completely up to you guys, but wanted to let you know that that is going to happen after the book reading. But there's also the Q&A button and the chat as well if you have any questions or <laughs> comments. So after this um, event is over, you guys are going to receive an email with a survey on it. And we would love you to fill that out so that we could um, serve you better. So we're, um, you know, with all of this virtual, we wanna know how best we can, we can serve you and help you receive this information. And last but not least, if you want to look for upcoming events and opportunities, you can go to treesatlanta.org and here are our socials if you want to connect with us there as well. So um, without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Anne-Marie. Hi, good morning, everyone. And Ashley, you forgot to say your name. So I'm gonna say thank you, Hi. Ashley. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I was so excited to get into the, the start of it. Yes, I'm Ashley. I'm the intern with the education program with Trees of Atlanta. And my name is Anne Marie. I love working with Trees of Atlanta and I love their mission and what they do in the city. So this is very fun for me to partner with Trees of Atlanta. I run a small business called Tyke Hike and I have designed Tyke Hike to get um, littles and families outdoors. And during this time, it's been especially important. As you know, um, outdoor time is, is critical for all of us. And I am quickly gonna run through the materials for our craft so that if you haven't compiled them yet, you can compile them really quickly while we're doing the story. And then I'm gonna read a really fun story and before that, we're going to sing a song and do a little bit of a, a game and exercise using our looking eyes and our listening ears. So the, the um, activities that you need for this craft, and you probably received this little um, insert by email, but um, I'm gonna get out my tight hike box for the materials. And I have, they're pretty easy materials to make these binoculars. I have um, a paper roll that I've cut in half. Um, you could also use uh, toilet paper rolls. This one is from the kitchen um, paper towel roll. Um, I have some construction paper that's going to go around the um, paper towel rolls. I have string that's going to be the binocular string that can go around your neck. And then I have lots of things to decorate. Um, so I have some stickers and some um, feathers, and then you're also gonna need some scissors and some tape. 
So parents that you can compile that, maybe you already have. And I am going to move on to our book. This book I find so fun. So I hope that you enjoy it with me. It is called Noisy Bird Sing Along by John Himmelman. Let me make sure that I'm oriented correctly. Okay. We love to listen to the singing birds. Each one has its very own song. Let's sing those songs with them. This is an interactive storybook. So, some bird songs sound like sentences. A robin starts the morning with a cheerful wish. Cheery up, cheerio, cheery up, cheerio. A wet lawn is a favorite place for robins to hunt for worms. Have you seen robins this spring? They're out there hunting for worms. Cheery up, cheerio. White-throated sparrows add a warm tune to a cold winter morning. Brr. Oh, sweet Canada, Canada, Canada. Oh, sweet Canada, Canada, Canada. Sparrows look for seeds and berries in the thick bushes. A yellow warbler sings sweetly near a stream. Sweet, sweet, I'm so sweet, sweet. I'm so sweet, sweet. Yellow warblers nest in wetlands where there are plenty of insects to eat. Can you see these cattails? I was recently up at Blue Heron Nature Preserve and they have cattails if you wanna go visit them. The deep voice of a barred owl seems to ask a question. Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? Most owls hunt for small mammals at night when the mammals are most active. Have you ever heard an owl at night? Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? <laughs> Some birds even say their name. Can you see this chickadee? A black capped chickadee pops on a branch. Chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee. Black capped chickadees live in woodlands where they find plenty of insects and seeds to eat. A whippoorwill, can you see that? It's a bit of a dark page. A whippoorwill whistles from the edge of a swamp. Whippoorwill, whippoorwill, whippoorwill. A whippoorwill's wide mouth helps it gulp up insects while it's flying. Some birds just make sounds. A mallard quacks in a pond. Quack, 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 quack. Can you see the, the... and here's, a male mallard back here with a green head. Mallards are dabbling ducks. They tip their bodies forward underwater to find seeds and water plants. Have you ever seen a duck do that? They swim along and then they poop. They put their beak in the water. Boop. This woodcock calls when the sun has set. Pink, 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 pink. Can you see him with this long beak? Pink, 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 pink. Woodcock's eyes are near the top of the head so they can look for danger from above while poking for worms in the soil. Nut hatches, do you see the nut hatch over here? Nut hatches sound like they have stuffy noses. Unk, 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 unk. Nut hatches white bellies reflect light on the bark which helps them find insects. See the nuthatch's white belly right here? Hummingbird wings hum in a blur of motion. Um, 
Mm. Hummingbird zip from flower to flower to sip sweet nectar. See these flowers? It's gonna collect the nectar from these flowers. A house sparrow chips from atop a brick wall. Chirp, 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 chirp. Many house sparrows live in crowded cities where they search for crumbs in parking lots. Chirp, chirp. A downy woodpecker taps away at a hollow branch. I'm gonna tap, 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 tap. Downy woodpeckers tap into trees and bark to find beetles and larvae, caterpillars and other insects to eat. Bring all the birds together for a chorus of song. Pink, 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 quack, 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 quack. Tap, 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 cheerio, up, cheerio, cheerio, up, cheerio. Whippoorwill, whippoorwill. Sweet, sweet, I'm so sweet, sweet, I'm so sweet, sweet. Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? Chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee. Cheerio, 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 up, cheerio. Oh, sweet Canada, Canada, Canada. Oh, sweet Canada, Canada, Canada. Chirp. Chirp, and then the hummingbird. Mm. That's the end of our story. But parents, there's a really cool fun facts about birds on the last page and some birdie things to do, which I learned a couple of things. So again, this is Noisy Birds Sing Along with John Himmelman. And now we are going to do our tight hike song, which has interactive movements. So I hope that you're ready. You can do this sitting down or you can do this standing up. So it's your preference. And each line repeats itself. So here we go. Are you ready? Rub your hands together. <laughs> going on a tight hike, going on a tight hike. Wonder what we'll see. Wonder what we'll see. We might hear some birds. We might hear some birds or splash in a creek or splash in a creek. We're outdoors together, outdoors together. So come take hike with me. So come take hike with me. All right. Thanks, friends, for humoring me with that song. We do it on every take hike. We have a lot of fun. All right, so now we are going to talk a little bit about birds. And we're also going to talk about our looking eyes. Everybody do this. Put on, turn on those looking eyes. And now turn on those looking ears. Somebody, some people go like that, some people go like that. Because when you're outside and you hear a bird, you're first gonna use your looking eyes, I mean, sorry, your listening ears, and then you're gonna look, see your looking eyes to see them. So I brought with me some fun show and tell today. I found this feather in North Georgia last winter and it spoke to me. Look at all the cool little lines and variations and colors. Um, I wish I could show it to you on per in person on a tight hike, but it is right here. And then I also brought a bird's nest that I found on the ground. Don't worry, I didn't go hunting for this bird's nest. But here it is. It's a little bit scraggly. A bird spent a lot of time making this soft, comfy nest for its eggs to go in. All right. Put that away. And now, Ashley, we are going to do our craft. 
All right, I will go ahead. It, it says um, allow to talk, so I don't know what it will look like on y'all's end, but um, I'm going to add you guys in here. Mm. All righty. So here are my supplies. One of them just fell on the ground. So we're going to start with your paper towel roll that's going to form your binoculars. And this is our example. I made this so that everybody could see what we're talking about. Um, and the way that I use these outdoors are I put them up to my eyes. You can practice when you're done. And I look for birds or I look way up high in the trees or I look way down low and see what's down in a creek or on the ground. And I've decorated them, as you can see, I've personalized them with some stickers, but you can use markers or anything else. So start with your paper towel rolls and you're gonna wrap each one in construction paper. This adds a little bit of color to my paper towel roll. And then with a little piece of tape, I'm gonna try not to go too fast. With a little piece of tape, there's one of my paper towel rolls. And then I am going to wrap. You might have to do this on the table. Wrap my other paper towel roll in construction paper. Parents, if you have any questions at all, let us know. One thing I really like about this activity is that it uses, repurposes items that we have at home, reusing paper rolls. All right, so now I have two parts of my binocular, but I am gonna use a piece of construction paper to link them together. And the way that I'm gonna do that is put them together and then wrap the construction paper around. And I like to use fun colors. So you can see that the ones I already made are red and orange, and these are blue and pink. You can really use whatever you have. If you have a white printer paper at home, that works too. So there we go. My binoculars are starting to take shape. The next thing that I am going to do is I have a string um, to use as my binoculars strap. Um, and I'm gonna take some scissors. Parents, I'm sure littles need help with this part. Um, and I'm going to hook a hole up near the top of my binocular, I don't even know what to call those binocular tubes. And that is where I am going to tie my string. And parents monitor kids closely when they have these on. You can even choose not to do the string if you prefer, um, because when something is around your neck, you have to be very careful.
Sorry, I'm having a little bit of, can you see me doing this? <laughs> I don't think my hole is big enough. I'm gonna make it a little bit. There we go. Well, this is requiring patience on my end. How's it going on your end? I can't see you. So maybe you're doing this craft with us. All right, I got it. Patience paid off. All right, so here is my next strap to put my binoculars on. And the next thing I am going to do is decorate them because I love colors. So I have some stickers here. I also have some feathers. So I'm going to decorate my binoculars with some stickers and some feathers. I'm also going to use a marker. And maybe I'll make some zebra stripes first. So I'm gonna make some zebra stripes. Can you see those? Zebra stripes on my binoculars. Never done that before. And, oh, my tape ran out. So I am not gonna put on, um, others today, but I am going to put on some stickers. All right, so here are some of my stickers. You can use whatever you have at home. All right, so there we go. I have put on a sticker, maybe I'll put on one more. Alrighty, so my binoculars are complete and I will put them on. How did you do with your craft? Are you still working on it? It's hard for me to tell. I like your pair. I like the zebra stripes. The zebra stripes. Next time, Ashley, you'll have to make these with us. I know, I didn't have the materials ready. I should have. Next time, we have a lot of fun. So, Here's a fun fact. In Australia, they call zebras zebras. Okay. There's a fun fact for you. <laughs> I love it. So parents, the um, we do a lot of in-person activities. We have them scheduled all spring. And we are doing an in-person activity with Trees Atlanta on Saturday, April 17th. Will you verify that date for me, Ashley? Yes, um, that is correct. And we're the, we keep our groups very small right now, limited registration. And so I encourage you to, our website is tykehike.com, T-Y-K-E-H-I-K-E.com. And we have um, events scheduled all spring. And that then then a special event with Trees Atlanta on April 17th. So I encourage you especially to go ahead and register. Oh, thanks, Ashley, for that one, if you would like to come, just because right now we do keep our, our numbers very small. And, and we do um, crafts and activities like this. And the, the whole reason is to get children and families comfortable outside. We have so much fun. We play games. Um, right now they're socially distanced games on every tight hike and we 
do a craft or a STEAM activity. We really like to introduce science um, topics at a really young age. Um, and then we sing that tight hike jingle, which everybody loves. And we actually go on a hike. And don't be worried if you bring, it's for children ages two to five. Our, our hike is um, kind of like a walk. Um, but it's all about adventure and seeing new things and, and walking over new terrain and, ex and finding new hidden spots in Atlanta that you may not have um, been to yet. I love um, finding new parks and I plan hike, take hikes in a lot of different um, parks like Blue Heron Nature Preserve. Um, I mentioned this morning, we have a take hike plan for there this spring. And then we go to a, a bunch of different parks in Morningside and Decatur, and um, we even plan special hike tight hikes by request. So if there's a park near you that you want to explore, we will come and customize a, a tight hike for you outdoors for you and your friends. So those are a few of the things that we're doing during this pandemic to encourage families to spend that quality time outdoors that everybody needs. And um that's that's what i can think of right now um ashley is there anything that else that you want to add from a trees atlanta standpoint um i don't think so just that um our our website is treesatlanta.org so you can go on there and um just hit the calendar tab and it can show you volunteer opportunities as well as education all of the um family and kids stuff will be on education. So you can uh, customize that to be just education and you can scroll and find our family events that are coming up as well. Like that one that Amory mentioned, that's that's gonna be April 17th and that one will be in person, yay. So now that it's getting warmer, we can go back outside. So um, that'll be awesome. But yeah, just check out our website to see what's coming up next. Sounds great. And I will close with saying, I hope, and in that little activity sheet that Ashley sent out that I created, it gives you some hints for using your binoculars um, and using your looking eyes and turning on your listening ears. And one exercise I love to do with kids is put on your looking eyes. I can't tell if people are with us and then look all the way up and you might have to do this outside because right now I'm looking at a ceiling, but go outside and look all the way up and it's all about observation. What do you, what do you see? What color are the clouds? What color is that tree? What do you see in that tree? And then something we don't always do is look all the way down. So what do you see on the ground? Um, with your looking eyes. And then always keep those listening ears turned on. So maybe later today you can go outside in your backyard or your local park or even take a walk around the block and use those looking eyes and listening ears. Thank you, Kins Kinsey. Um, we would love any feedback that you have, Kinsey, and we hope to see you in person in April. Um, and that's it for me. So yeah. thank you guys. Thank you, Anne-Marie, for that fun activity and book. All right. Bye, Bye. Ashley. Bye, everyone.